Are you looking to take your personal finances to the next level? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Monday Money Tip Podcast, presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not, with your host, Joseph Sangle. Well, welcome to the Money Money Tip Podcast, presented by Fully Funded Life. My name is Joe Sangle, and we come to you each and every Monday morning with some right now relevant information to help you in your money journey so that you, yes, you can live a fully funded life. I am joined still uh, by my co-host, Megan Hibbard. Uh, we're recording this in April, and it's going to be releasing on what day? It's going to be releasing on May 23rd. We, we had this goal, maybe, of having all the podcasts recorded before you go on the maternity leave so that you never miss an episode, but... Life gets crazy. I'm not sure we're going to fully get there, <laughs> uh, but we're going to get quite a ways ahead. Yeah. So we're excited about oh, that. Yes. And so we're on episode number what? 203. 203. You 203. Yeah. On our way to 300. And we are going to talk about something that's really cool. Uh, number one, Megan's going to tell everybody what she's naming these twin boys. No. No? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> tell everybody what we're going to talk about in today's uh, episode. If I knew, <laughs> I would tell you. <laughs> that's good. I like it. I just, I am indecisive over here. Ronnie and Donnie. And... I we have names that we're like sitting on, okay. But it feels. Are very, you physically sitting on them? <laughs> I feel, <laughs> but I like it feels very permanent hmm. to like say them out loud. It is. It is and very I'm permanent. Not sure. Okay. I'm there. That's good. First but, and middles. Yes. Okay, that's great. The middles have actually been harder. Give us a tip. Give us a little clue. Do they have the same initials? No. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right, so today we're talking about um, topics couples should discuss. In this one, we're talking about debt. Okay. So our question is, I just recently got engaged. Well, congratulations. Um, one thing I need to discuss with my fiance is our debt. What are some pointers on how to have this conversation? Ooh, mm. that's going to be real good. Well, well I like that, that they're asking, asking the question. Yeah. That's right. That's awesome. Before we dive into that, we're going to go to one of those favorite sections of the podcast, the one everybody looks forward to. Let's go. Now it's time to get caught up with our current money events. The Monday Money Tip podcast is sponsored by the Fully Funded Life Membership Program. The Fully Funded Life Membership Program provides all you need to begin winning with money and live a fully funded life. Fully Funded Life includes four key components, courses, challenges, coaching, and community. Courses provide financial education. Challenges help you make massive progress in a specific money skill. Coaching is provided by the Fully Funded Life Certified Coaches through open office hours held multiple times each month. All of the courses, challenges, and coaching results in an outstanding community that help equip, motivate, and encourage you to take your next financial steps toward your fully funded life. Fully Funded Life. Courses, challenges, coaching, community. All that's missing is you. Learn more and receive a special offer for Monday Money Tip listeners today at fullyfunded.life slash MMT. That's www.fullyfunded.life slash MMT. Awesome. For today's current money event section. Um, last week, during our current money event section, we talked about how to combat inflation. It feels like it's war, <laughs> it you know, during your vacations. And we know some of you are staying home this summer to avoid those rising prices. So we wanted to give you a few tips to have a fun summer staycation and not break your bank. So the first thing is uh, to look at your local Chamber of Commerce website for free local events. Many cities will host free concerts in the park or downtown over the summer. I know our town, Anderson, has the downtown sounds or whatever on Thursday nights. And mm -hmm. Greenville, just a hop, skip, and a jump away, a beautiful town in South Carolina, has a concert series and arts festivals every weekend for like 16 weekends in a row. The Farmer's Market on Saturdays. Farmer's Market yep. on Saturdays. And they're all free. Of course, you're buying things. It won't be free. You can check out those neighboring cities. Like I just mentioned, with Greenville, there's also a lot of the little cities around here like Williamston has the Apple Festival. They have an Apple Festival? Yeah, they have an Apple Festival. And I'm pretty sure Pumpkin Town, yes, that's Pumpkin the name Town. of a town in yes. South Carolina, has a Pumpkin Festival if you can believe it. Yeah. It'd be awesome if they had like a squash festival in Pumpkin Town. That'd be awesome. 
Uh, we also have Slab Town. I'm not sure what Slab Town has. Maybe they have... They sell you concrete uh, slabs. S- concrete slabs. That's right. Yes, they <laughs> have a concrete slab festival. Or maybe it's like where, it's where Marble Slab came from and you get your Marble yeah. Slab ice cream there. Yeah, there you go. Marble. That's much better. A Marble <laughs> Slab ice cream would be much better. You can also search for a free splash pad near you. Right now, our local park is spending a couple million dollars mm-hmm. to build a new splash pad. It should be open. Isn't right? that nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah very soon. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the last time I was at the soccer fields uh it's a great way to cool off plus you can pack a picnic lunch to avoid going out to eat you can also check out what churches in your town are hosting vacation bible schools though they're typically free or very inexpensive and a great source of entertainment for your kids i remember i would go to vbs as a kid and it was really unique to me because i never went to a different church right as a kid you like go if you go to church you go to one church right and it was so unique because i went to another church Hmm. a different brand oh Ooh. Pretty unbelievable. And it was awesome. I had a great time. Went with the neighbor kids. And, and it was great. And uh, I took, I've taken my kids to, to different churches in town. They're VBSs, and it's great. Uh, a couple other things you can do is visit state or national parks near you. A- again, pack that picnic. Hit the trails. You get fit <laughs> while also going for very cheap. You can also buy like a state parks pass for mm-hmm. next to nothing. Get into every park. Also, the a lib- li- lot of libraries will... You can check out a state park pass. Huh? Mm -hmm. Our library in Anderson, you can check out a state park pass. You can also check out a pass to the Children's Museum. What? I know. Look at this. Megan dropping some knowledge, saving everybody some money. I know. You can also look on TripAdvisor for free things to do in your city. And you know what? I found that kids really don't care how much money you're spending on things. That's true. They just love having mom and dad play games with them. I, I'll give a couple extra tips. Take their technology away. There you go. Like, don't let them have it. Uh, my kids are different kids when they don't have technology, and that's why Monday through Friday they don't get technology. That's good. Yeah, and they're different children, and I love that. Mm. Awesome. So that's it for today's current money events section. We also have a PDF about cheap summer ideas that oh. I will link in the show notes. That's great. Yep. Thanks for doing that. For other ideas. That You're you so have. kind to people. You know, That's why you're on the podcast. I, I get all terse and all fired up and do this and ordering people around. And then you come along with nice, handy dandy guides and A tips. PDF. It's wonderful. <laughs> How nice. There we go. All so right. tell everybody a success story because we're losing a little steam and this pow- podcast <laughs> is powered by our listeners' success. Share some success. Um, I'm not losing steam. Maybe you need to drink some more of your coffee to get more steam. We'll Start sharing the success story. <laughs> okay. Today's success uh, comes from our, one of our fully funded life members. That's this. the energy coming back. Do you like it? <laughs> See, I was waiting to do that. That's why I want. <laughs> I'm sorry to ruin your moment. <laughs> um, this member has paid off some debt and they are well on their way to getting rid of more. They said, I have paid off my car. My student wow. loan debt is significantly lower and I'm hoping to have it paid off by the end of the year. So, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Those, the engine is running on the feet. podcast. They paid off their car like it was no big deal. No, I paid off my paid car. My car no big deal. Paid it off. My and student then, loan debt significantly lower and hoping to have it paid off by the end of the year. <laughs> you know, that is fantastic. And that's, that's what, listen, it, it, what we hope to do is provide moments of inspiration with one practical thing people can do. Mm-hmm. Just one practical thing they can do. And that's why we really, we operate on this statement that money is a journey, not just a moment. And that is the truth. And when we look at fully funded life, that's why we created it. We can be a part of people's long-term journey. And you don't need financial information every day. You don't need new information. It takes a while to work on things, but when you need it, is it there? Mm -hmm. Can you talk to someone? And that's why we created fully funded life. Excited about our fully funded life members success. The podcast can carry on because it is full battery now. (laughs) Full power. All right. So for our question for today, it's, um, I recently just got engaged. One thing I need to discuss with my fiance is our debt. What are some pointers on how to have this conversation? Yeah. So let's start by saying what you said at the top. Yep. And that is, this is a great question to be asking before, before you you're get fully married, married right? Yes. Because there's, there, I like they're already referring to it with the right pronoun, our, not mine and yours, mm-hmm. but ours. Because yeah. when you are pronounced as one, it is all yours. Yeah. Together. I feel like money is like an interesting thing that like you have to learn to combine when you're married. 
And I feel like it takes time. Like it's not like a, I mean, you instantly have a house and yeah, you're working on how to live with another person, but like <laughs> your finances are like your spouse go out, goes out and spends something and you're like, Ooh, I wouldn't have done that. That's our money. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, like it, it, it takes a minute to say, cause at first it was like, that's my money. What are you doing with that? But no, it's like, no, it's our money. Maybe we should have discussions about, you know, like it just opens Ooh. a conversation for a lot. Yeah, that, you know, that's interesting. Did Jordan ever hear that from you? Like, yes. Mm, yes. What was one thing he bought that you were like, I cannot believe any human being spent money on that. Ooh. See, we've been married for a minute. It's kind of hard to remember yeah. that. I'm kind of thinking the same thing. You know, this year's Jenny and I's 25th wedding anniversary. I'm trying to remember, you know, the first, oh, I remember. I remember the first time we were spending money on something. And I could not believe we were spending U.S. currency on it. <laughs> well, I do remember. It. I was chided by my mother. My, my bride wanted to go buy a vacuum. Oh. And I was like, huh? Why? What? what? We have a broom, you know? A broom. And she was like, go buy a vacuum. And I'm like, okay, I guess we're going to, you're going, you're going to go buy a vacuum. And my mother was upset that I did not go with my bride to buy the vacuum. She said I should have went with her to buy the vacuum. I just got a new vacuum and it's so exciting. <laughs> I love it. Isn't it weird? Things that you never <laughs> thought you would write when you're graduating high school. I bought a new vacuum and it is awesome. I asked Jordan for it for my birthday and he wouldn't buy it is for it me. Is it battery powered? Yeah, it's yeah. one of the stick vacuums. Oh yeah, we got one of those. It's unbelievable, it's especially great. on hardwood floors. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so... So one, they're having the conversation and they're saying it's ours. Two great things. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I feel like we should go through some questions about debt that couples should discuss maybe before getting married. Yeah, kind so, of a guide. Yeah, so... What one of the questions could be? What debt are you bringing into this marriage? So you could maybe you could share what debt um, did you bring into your marriage? With yeah, and I can talk about the debt she brought in. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> so Jen Sangle had a total of one thousand three hundred dollars of student loan debt. That was her total debt. That's wild. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, she had went to college for five years, and she got this scholarship that basically paid for it all. Mm -hmm. Pretty unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I brought in, you know. Thousands of dollars on a credit card. I had bought a car, brand new, and I had tens of thousands of dollars of student loan debt. And I bought a truck for my dad, and I owed that money to him. Uh, so those are the debts that I had. Mm. And but it was very clear we, sh she knew the debts that we had. Yeah. And sh she she did not marry me for money. I can tell you that. I was in the hole with a negative net worth. I'm not quite sure how I talked she to her. She lucked to out me. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing okay. <laughs> so, but that was the debts that I brought in. It's very typical debt. Student loans, credit cards, owing mom and dad, mm -hmm. a car. And, and I think that's pretty common. But letting it be known so that there's no surprises mm -hmm. when you get home from the honeymoon and you find out you have $100,000 in student loan debt and you never told me yeah. is not a good way to start out marriage. Yeah. When you could have had the conversation many times before then. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So, Megan, what debt did you have when you got married? I'm, I'm going to guess. None. <laughs> so I didn't have any debt. There we go. <laughs> College was, I didn't have any student loans, Look which I'm you. very thankful for. That's um, great. One of two college students basically leaves with little to no student loan debt. Yeah. 50%. Very thankful. I don't think you truly understand like how thankful you are until you get out. And even like to get to this point in life and a lot of friends are still paying, Yeah, you know, and it's just something that I was like blessed with. And I'm like, wow. Like, thank you, now, mom like, and dad. Thank you, mom and dad. Yeah. yeah. And I worked hard. I mean, I got scholarships. Like it wasn't, yeah. um, just like, here you go. So, um, but then my, the car that I had had been paid for and I drove that thing. It was a two door Honda Civic that I drove until Jordan and I got married. And then that was like our first big purchase. We bought a Honda Accord with four door. Mm, um, yeah. Um, but Jordan had some student loans and one of his big goals was to pay that off before we got married. So mm. he paid off all of his student loans, um, before we got married. So the only debt, I guess you can consider a debt, but we had the house when we got married. Oh. So, um, he had already purchased the house. He had purchased the house before we got Did married. Did you walk through the house with him when he bought it? So he like showed me pictures and I hadn't actually, at the time we didn't live in the in, same in town. Anderson. We lived in North Carolina. Okay. We were moving to Anderson. 
So I didn't actually see the house, but, um, until after he'd bought it, but he showed me pictures and we looked at it together and it was kind of like, this is going to be your house one day. What do you think? You know? Ooh. So <laughs> had he proposed already? Not yet. But wow. We, we, he didn't say that, but it was kind yeah. of like, what do you think about this? <laughs> oh, and you're like, I like the direction this is going. So, so th- that's really important. So answering this person's question, you know, just, just have the conversation. Yeah. You know, you have a lot of conversations with your beloved. Mm hmm. Uh, prior to getting married, make sure one of them is just saying, Hey, I have these debts. That's a good way to do it. I lead with, I have these debts, unless you have no debt, Mm -hmm. then you can say, Hey, I, I don't really have any debt. I got a lot of buddies who have student loan debt. Do you have any debt? Like bringing that up as part of the conversation, just bring it up, have the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then I feel like you could, I mean, then the next natural step is making ways for how to pay it off Yes. as a couple. Yes. Because when you go into marriage, hopefully your income is double what yeah. you were yeah. when you were single, you know? But, okay, so what are some pointers to having? We talked about this, but have for having a guided, guiding the uncomfortable debt conversation. Yeah, so, so, so what I just did for how to have it, how to guide that conversation, that's a great question. I, I would say when I'm looking at uh, a young couple, just like I just said, t- bring up someone else's name. Mm-hmm. Hey, so and so, they they got married, and they were telling me they did not know their their spouse had this student loan debt, and it made me realize, hey, I want to make sure there's no surprises for us. I want to tell you these are the debts I have. Mm-hmm. What debts do you have? So it's 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 really important. It's a great way to bring it in, saying, hey, this other person, or hey, I read a statistic that says a lot of people have hidden debt. Mm-hmm. In their marriage. I don't want that to happen for us. I want us to be really clear on this. So, you know, while you're at Starbucks, you can have the conversation. And it, it seems awkward until you're in the conversation. And it seems very normal. Yeah. And what I would encourage you is I want you in your marriage, this person who's asking this, getting ready to get married. I want money conversations to not be something to be avoided or fraught with peril or something you have to tippy toe around M- money should not be something you tippy toe around. Mm. It is something you're making money decisions every yeah. single day. I have a quill on the table today. It's from a Turkey feather that I found. And, uh, and I was thinking this would be a really good idea, uh, with the Turkey feathers that I found to make some quills to some pins. Mm-hmm. So I had an idea what if I got on Amazon and found out if they sold ink inserts, you know, like refills mm-hmm. and they sell them so cheap, mm-hmm. like for eight bucks, I got like 50 blue, black and red ink pens, my choice. And so I figured out how to make these quills and they write unbelievable. You know, I'm, I'm look at that. Isn't that awesome? It's like a gel pen oh, yeah, and, like a- and nothing says you're doing something like a feather <laughs> flopping around in front of you while you're writing. But I'd say, I say this as an example here, like I spent eight bucks on that. And I told my bride, I spent eight bucks on that. Mm-hmm. Like there's no hiding that. Like, I don't want to hide that. There's yeah. no reason to hide that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to be, and no one really wants to have the marriage where you're hiding stuff all the time. That seems so weird. So don't do that. If you want to maximize your marriage, make sure you have this conversation early and normalize it. And if you find yourself getting uh, agitated or frustrated or ashamed or feel humiliated just sharing it, uh, that's probably not your fiance that is causing that. It's probably money wounds from your past on maybe how your parents related with money or maybe how you grew up with money. Maybe you grew up in poverty or whatever. And just learn, hey, how to manage those feelings. But have the conversation so that it's normalized. That's what I would encourage you to do. Yeah. All right. So another question that we could ask. So we talked about what debts are you bringing into marriage? That's like the ultimate question you're talking about. But then also, what are your plans to pay off the debt bringing into marriage? So um, how did you get rid of your debt after you were married? We talked about yeah. you know, creating a plan for that as your spouse. But Well, I continued to accrue debt <laughs> for the first uh, three, three, four years. Uh, I went and bought a house. We bought furniture, all of it on debt. Mm-hmm. We continued to run the credit cards. And for us, we finally, my, my bride was a natural saver. And so she was kind of like, hey, shouldn't we have 
savings? <laughs> there should be some savings. She kept mentioning the $4 word $4 savings. $4.13 yes. didn't and constitute so, a savings? So I had an average balance of $4.13, <laughs> but uh, I can pull the books out that show you that many times it was far less than that. And so I, what I would just say is we, we finally had a conversation, meaning I finally came to the table in agreement that says $4.13 is not enough for savings. This isn't going to get us where we're wanting to go. And for me, I, it started, and this is why this is rung one of the ladder. Mm -hmm. It started with having a dreams conversation with Jen mm -hmm. and writing down all of her dreams, me writing down my dreams, found out that we share a lot of dreams, uh, but we also have individual dreams and asking ourselves a very simple but powerful question, which is if we keep managing money this way, will we be able to accomplish these things we've written down? Yeah. And the answer was no chance or it's going to be greatly delayed from when we would like to achieve it. And so I said that I, for me, having clarity of plans, hopes, and dreams helped us get clarity on how to address our debt. Mm -hmm. And it helped me put together a budget. It helped me have the, the mental energy to prepare a budget, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of people listening Understand what that means, have yes. mental energy on that. I understand that. Yeah. But then, you know, when you're doing a budget, you're going to tell yourself no. And if you can't give yourself the, the first, second, third dream, which are the reasons why you're telling yourself no for now, hey, I'm saying no so that this dream can come true, well, then you, you'll just live for the minute. Mm -hmm. But when you have the dreams, you can anchor to it. And that's really important. So that's, what, so that's how we got rid of our debt. So we got the dreams. And after that, it was like, it was so easy. We just made a decision. I, we call it deciding to decide. Mm -hmm. we, we decided to decide no more debt. Mm -hmm. So for me, I uh, got some inspiration from Dave Ramsey. I got some inspiration from Robert Kiyosaki, uh, from David Chilton and David Bach, those four individuals. And I chopped up my credit cards because I could not control my credit cards. And I literally called all the companies and shut the accounts mm -hmm. down. And we lived for six years with no credit cards yeah. because... I knew they were enabling my impulsiveness. And that was a massive step for us that felt very weird and awkward that I was cutting off my lifeline in case we had an emergency. Right. I found out I was chopping off the chains of bondage mm -hmm. and it set, set us free. It mm -hmm. allowed us to become debt free in 14 months, except for our house. Yeah. 10 years and one month later, we paid off our house. That's awesome. Fired up. Um, and I do know if you're in this, if you're in that boat and you're looking at how to pay off this debt, we have in Fully Funded Life, so we have an entire course on paying off your debt and how to do it and eight ways to do it quicker and steps you can take and plans you can make. And so it, it really, I feel like if that's where you're at, that could be a great next step of maybe this couple needs to join Fully Funded Life. You know, they have, they work on their steps together yeah. and then they are able to do coaching, financial coaching free. Like there's all these things that could be. <laughs> incredible for them as so i know i know right now that there are people listening and saying dear lord jesus <laughs> like that sounds so boring and so nerdy <laughs> that you're gonna you're gonna take financial classes together mm. well i would tell you you took a lot of classes in school mm. that you never used again it's true right but money is something that is going to be an issue you deal with on a daily basis until you pass on from this life so yeah. why not make that investment well, and you do marriage counseling and, yeah. and sometimes financial part is part of marriage counseling, yeah. but sometimes it's not. And that's a huge part of marriage where a lot of couples, I mean, money is what, 50% of the reason people get divorced. Like it's a huge, it's definitely it's, the top reason they fight, you know? So why wouldn't you want to invest in that before taking that step? Yeah. Just saying. There you go. All right. So another question maybe you might want to ask is what are you willing to go into debt over as a couple? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question that the couple themselves has to answer. Right. Yeah. So, you, you know, for Jenny and I, uh, we realized, hey, we're not going to be able to pay cash for a house. Mm -hmm. Does that seem shocking? No. So we're willing to go into debt over the house. Right. We're willing to go into debt for our first car because we had both driven absolute trash clunkers all of our life. Mm -hmm. And we were over it. We had excellent incomes, dual income, no kids, and we bought a car, and we financed it for four years. We drove that thing, <laughs> well, we drove it for 10 years, drove it 330,000 miles, 
And of those six years, you know, that we weren't paying a payment anymore, we were able to stack up that money. We've never, we've never bought a, a personal car again with that. Mm. Just didn't do that. Yeah. Like we, we've bought multiple nearly new or new cars, uh, but never with debt. Just yeah. go pay cash. And I found out dealers, they can't make money on cash buyers, really. It's true. So they're just like, yawn. They make money on the financing. They, they're just like, you brought a check. Oh, I can't make money off this person. Yeah. Interesting. That's true. Not much money. They certainly make money. Yeah. All right. So maybe the last question you're going to ask in this conversation is, how will you handle it when the budget says no? So maybe... It's not in the budget to buy something that you're used to being able to buy because yeah. you don't have to be accountable to another person. <laughs> but now you've created this budget together as a married couple or an engaged couple, and it's just not there. What you know, you I, I love this question. This is a great question, actually. And it could actually be a whole episode of the podcast. I yeah. really feel like that. This is for a new couple, though. How will you handle it when the budget says no? What I would say is the conversations you're right having right now will become habits in your relationship Mm. with your spouse. So it is healthy for you to allow the budget to tell you no Mm -hmm. and to have those feelings of disappointment, have those feelings of sacrifice, that feeling of delayed gratification, Mm. um, and, and the let it unite you as a team together to say, we together have declared no to this thing mm. so that this greater thing and name it, whatever this dream is, can become a reality in the timeline we desire it to. Mm. And let that, there's something about sacrificing together as a couple that when you finally achieve a major financial goal or any other victory in, in your relationship, it just makes it worth it so much more because you know you sacrifice for that. You know what you gave up so that that would happen. Mm -hmm. Like Jen and I cut out enormous amounts of restaurants and a bunch of our friends would go out to eat after every church service. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday, right? And they go out to eat after church on Sunday morning, after church on Sunday night, after church on Wednesday. Well, that adds up to huge amounts of money. I don't care if you're going to McDonald's or wherever. And we just said, nah, we're going to go home. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. Why? Why are you? It, are you mad at us? No. We're 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 sick and tired of being broke, and we have these other dreams. And to be able to achieve those dreams, hugely helpful. So I would just encourage you: let the budget tell you no. It is helpful for Jen and I today to let the budget <laughs> tell us no, even when the bank account says we can go do it. Self sacrifice, delayed gratification, unification around saying no. Very healthy. Hmm. That's good. All right. So our verse for today is Proverbs 22, 7, and it says, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. Yep. And it's just merely a statement of fact. People get mad at it, but it is a statement of fact. Mm -hmm. So, hey, in our next episode, what do we want to talk about? So we're continuing our series on the foundational elements of the ladder. So we've talked about known upcoming expenses. So this one, this time we're talking about insurance as a foundational element of the ladder. Yeah, so, so if you have questions about insurance mm-hmm. or if you have the right insurance or what insurance should you have, tune in. Really important. Mm-hmm. Insurance is the topic a lot of people really want to run away from, but is wildly important. Yeah. And so if you like today's episode, please help us get this podcast to other people who can benefit. You can do it by quickly rating our podcast and leaving a review. That helps the algorithm expose this podcast to more potential listeners. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to click that subscribe button, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to leave a comment, you know, the comment is, Hey, if you've been married and you've had something that you fought over constantly, or if there's something that's helped you in your marriage, in this conversation of debt and with couples, Hey, leave your best tip that you'd leave this young couple who's getting ready to get married. What has helped you most be unified around this area of debt in your marriage? Share that comment. That'll be hugely helpful. Thanks so much and have a great week. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Monday Money Tip Podcast presented by I Was Broke, Now I'm Not. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review and subscribe. And for more great content and to stay up to date, visit IWBNIN.com. We'll catch you next time.